My people, my people, my people, welcome to the My People Podcast, where we talk with influencers in business, fashion, and lifestyle. I'm your host, The Wealthy Guy. I'm a men's style expert, custom clothier, and published photographer. This week on episode nine of the My People Podcast, we are here with Alex Pizzo. So Alex, he gave me his bio, the bio kind of long, I'm gonna get through most of it, Alex. Um, but very glad to have you here on, on the show. So, born Alexander Mays, Alexander Pizzo is a notable men's and women's high fashion designer. His business savvy and a love for design and people make him the perfect branding and styling connoisseur. Alexander Pizzo, LLC, has been a trademark brand since 2002. You've been doing this. Yeah. We've, been working at it. We've, we've, we've been working at it. All right. The brand's name originates from a combination of Alexander's middle name and a given name, Pizzo. Expanding the brand to more than fashion has always been the target goal of Alexander Pizzo, LLC. In saying that, he wrote his second and third book, Polish Your Appearance, A Gentleman's Guide to Style and Image, as well as Polish Your Appearance, A 30-Day Devotional. With that to his acclaim, Alexander's brand has been featured on many, 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 many <laughs> <laughs> online as well as, you know, print publications, right. on podcasts, on TV, on all sorts of things. Right, right. Um, so he can remember during the infancy when he started selling T-shirts uh, that he started refashioning and started refashioning blazers. He had a retail space in Cincinnati that looked great aesthetically. However, the business growth at that time was not scalable, which affected him, you know, running the business. Absolutely. So, Alexander is also the chief executive officer for Caliber Real Estate Investment Group, a wholesale property company. Alexander Pizzo. Ooh, that was a mouthful. That, that was a lot, man. <laughs> that was a lot, but I am very glad to have you on the show. Um, Alexander and I met on Instagram and you know we started talking from there. Right. You know, I'm a little old school, he a little old school. We jumped on the phone, That's right? right? That's like right. all that texting going back fill and forth. Fill it out. <laughs> exactly. Fill it out, fill it out. And you know, I said I was gonna come down to, you know, Atlanta and I, I let him know I was gonna be here and we made it happen. And here, he's here. Here we are. Yeah, in the building. Yeah. So Alexander, yes. Take us Bring us back, bring us back, kind of bring us back to the beginning, you know? Yeah. Where you from, okay. all of that stuff, how you got here? So, uh, again, you know, I'm Alexander Pizzo. The way I got here is I started out back in 1993, yep. actually. And I started out just, just you know, selling t-shirts yep. uh, out of a shed. I don't know wow. if you remember those old school sheds that we would store, lawnmowers, your tools, and things of that nature. Right. In, in the city, you know, those, those, that's what we use. And um, I started out that way, and I just grew from there. I was actually uh, set up at a company called Fun Carts. Uh -huh. And what Fun Carts was, it was a go-kart place and a place where kids would come play games on Friday and Saturday night. Right. So David Funk and I, we, you know, we had befriended one another, yep. and he afforded me the opportunity to set up shop on his property. Okay. And, and my sales pitch to him was, hey, you have a lot of overflow customers and customers just standing around. Right. Why don't we give them something to something to do so that when all of the games are taken, when all of the go-karts are taken and they're waiting on batting cages, we can kind of fill in the blanks and give them something to right. do in that downtime. Right. That's clever. So yeah, he so he went for the pitch and uh, that's how I started out. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, born and raised, yep. uh, spent about seven years in, in, in Nashville, Tennessee. I noticed you in Chattanooga the other day. Yep. So Nashville is one, one of my favorite cities. And uh, back in November of 2012, uh, my wife, my family and I, we worked our way to Atlanta and we've been yep. here ever since. Yep, and you loving it. Absolutely. So, so before we, we started the show, we talked a little bit about 
you know, Atlanta and living down here and what it's like in Georgia. And I was just saying, I, I can't live here. I, I don't want to drive, <laughs> but right. I love coming here. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, you said it's the, the weather's way better than Cincinnati. The weather's unbelievable. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's hot, but it's good. But I understand what you mean by the weather in Cincinnati. I spent some time in Columbus. Absolutely. Um, during the winter. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I know, a bit, you know, what, what it's like in Ohio during right. during the winter so right. I understand what you mean by by the weather so you had the t-shirt business going right. Right. right so then what what from there so so from there you know I, I finished up college you, you go from there to um, I graduated college yep had a daughter our, our oldest uh, um, Bria Kathleen yep and you know life gets in the way right you you have to go you know there's always that, that saying that you do what you have to do so that you can eventually do what you want to do. Right, right. So what I had to do at that time was I went into banking and finance for about 10 years. Yep. Still, you know, still grinding behind the scenes with the business. Right. Uh, but just not putting it together the way I wanted to. Right. And uh, sometimes you just have to be willing to take that jump. Oh, for sure. I know, I know and that. You know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm preaching to the choir, yeah, right? Yeah, yep. So about 10 years in, I took that jump. And uh, we went from doing t-shirts to yep. from doing custom t-shirts and, and graphic tees to, yep. to doing bow, t bow ties and pocket square. Right. We just continued to, to grow the brand. Right. Um, and then we went into, the, I like to call it the animal, the, the, the belly of the beast, mm -hmm. a brick and mortar. Uh, and, and, mm -hmm. yep. and, and brick and mortar sounds great, but it's not always scalable for every business. Correct. Uh, and, um, you know, my, my mindset was, well, we'll set up right above Saks Fifth Avenue and right. we'll catch the overflow. Right. Um, great idea. Yep. But you know, it always resorts back to those three P's: people, process, and product. Right. And um, you know, we had a nice product, but you can't. It's really hard to compete with a Saks. Oh, for sure. You for know, sure. A, a yep. Barney's, yep. a Bloomingdale's. So really, what we had to do was we had to go back to the drawing board, and you know, and I've learned that my goal is to get that next step or two steps further every time. Right. You may have to recalibrate, you may have to refocus, relaunch, but the main thing is you have to keep going. Right, right. So for us, it was, we started doing bow ties and pocket squares and, you know, as you can see, you know, we do anything from a, from a pocket square right. to, a, to a blazer to, to custom suits. And we just kept, re I kept reinventing myself and yep. reinventing the brand. And, um, you get it. Oh yeah. And uh, here, you know, here we are today. You know, we we've been able, as you said, it, it it's kind of lengthy, but you know, we've been able to you know be featured in Sheen magazine, be featured on the cover of Bonaire magazine, right? Be featured in you know some print, uh, do some commercial wardrobing, right? Uh, for for a couple of religious shows and different things like that. So we really, really just just kind of kept our nose to the grindstone and just really stay focused on our end game. Right, yes, no, you definitely are dropping some gems, right? Because a lot of people are always asking me, how can I do what you're doing, right? right? And, and you really hit the nail on the head in saying that, okay, you try something, it doesn't go as planned, right. but you don't stop. You don't stop. You don't give up, you no. keep going. No. Yeah, you keep going and you reinvent yourself. Um, and, and that's what I'm always finding that it, it works. You can't stay the same. That's right. Right. Every to every lesson learned, you, you have to like grow from it. Right. Um, so let me ask you this. So, um, with, with that experience, right. Where you like, okay, this, the, the brick and mortar thing, um, didn't necessarily work out in right. that particular space. Absolutely. What were some of your like lessons learned in, in, but more importantly, what would you do different? This time, if you went that route, so yeah. so so my takeaway is something I refer to in my book as the five P's. Right, and, and that takeaway is perfect practice prevents poor performance. Um, right, you, you know sometimes we we may have a plan for level one and two, right. but it's not scalable once we delve deeper and drill deeper. Right, and so so for me it was it was being willing to um, con continue uh, to stay humble and hungry. Yep, and understand that nothing is constant as change. Right. What didn't work today doesn't mean it what wasn't a great idea. Right. Maybe I just needed to make some adjustments and modifications, and right. it may may take a different market. Right. right. So hence moving to Atlanta in 2012, understanding right. that this was a much better market for the product, yep. um, the people, yep. and the process of, of of what we're trying to to get to. Right. Yeah. So less, you know. 
um, you sent me the book some time ago, <clears throat> and you know I read through it, and I really love the way that it started out. Okay, with your background story and your mother read, That's right? right. Absolutely. And how she made sacrifices for you right. to be in, you know, essentially the position that you are in today. Absolutely. Right? Um, and I think that that is a great story. So I want to talk to you, you know, about about the books, right? Because right? there's more than one. Um, I want to talk to you about the book. One, firstly, you know, tell them how you, you know, decided to say, I'm going to put these things in the book right so um and that's great you know again um r.i.p to my mom you know right. she, she passed away a little bit over three years ago you said her nickname's red and a lot of people you know when you come from inner city communities a lot of us have a nickname right but her nickname actually came from a space of she was born with a tint of red hair right so they nicknamed her red her name's uh, y Yvonne Alexandria Mays. Right. So what, what she decided to do at a very young age, so first off, she had me, she she was 15. Right. She had me in February, she turned 16 that March. Right. And uh, we lived on the first floor of my grandmother's house. My mom has uh, four sisters and a brother, yep. six of them. And what she decided to do um, after second grade, yep. um, I was eight. I was seven, she decided to bus me across the city. Right. So in busing me across the city, she took me from the north side of Cincinnati to the east side. Yep. And uh, really Cincinnati, when you get to the rivers, it's really divided west and east. Right. So she basically took me from the west of the city and would bus me to the east of the city. Right. So I would literally have to take two buses. I'd have to go to Government Square because there was no school bus. Right. So I'd have to go to Government Square from Government Square, I'd have to take a second bus and then have about another 30 minute ride right. to get to school. So in essence, it took me about an hour and 20 minutes, um, depending on traffic, depending on if I missed the bus, caught a bus, right. to get to school. Yep. So she sent me to St. Francis de Sales in third and fourth grade, and she told me at that time, she says, son, I don't have a blueprint, but my goal is to put you in a position that I've never been privy to. Right. And um, you know, one of the things that I say, um, I quote my mom, she said, everyone wants to grow, right. but growth is uncomfortable. Yes, And she, sure. she said, in order yeah. to grow, there are going to be some situations I put you in that you, you won't understand now, but when you have kids, it'll make sense to you. Right. And you know, and keep in mind, you know, my mom had me at 15, turning 16. My father never spent the day in the home. Right. In fact, when he was 19, my mom was 16. Um, they had a going away party right. for him to go into the military. Uh -huh. And I say that not to feel sorry for my mom or myself, but it was right. the fact that here this woman is, she just had a child when she's a child, basically right. babies raising babies. Yep. Um, and you know, and I, I have a theory on that. Normally when you have babies raising babies, that, that, that leads to a lack of education. Yes. A lack of education normally leads to poverty. Right. Poverty normally leads to crime. Right. And it normally seems to infiltrate the African American community, and it seems to um, allow us to, to somewhat treadmill, right? Um, and, and it becomes systematic, right? But my mom said she was going to do the opposite of everything she was being told to do in school. When she was told she wanted to go to college, um, they said to her, "Hey, listen, don't go to college. Just yep. have a couple more kids and get on the system." So, uh, my, like people, friends. People, no, 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 no. In the, in school, the school. In the school. Because think about it, my mom graduated high school in 1972. Right. That was at the time the influx of of of, of getting on welfare. Right. Uh, getting right. on government assistance programs. Right. And she said, at that time, she knew she had to do the opposite for right. me right. of everything she was being told to do for herself. Right. She was wise enough not to have any more kids. Right. And um, she put me through herself, put me through Catholic school, put me through private school, some of the better schools in Cincinnati, Ohio. Right. But it wasn't always easy, you know. Right. She transitioned me from third and fourth grade to a school in fifth grade that I speak about, St. Mark's. Right. And that was the first time I really got an opportunity to see affluent African Americans. Right. But she said, you know what? I also want you to see how the other side lives. Right. I don't want you to try and assimilate, right. but I want you to see how they live because that may make you privy to some other opportunities that you would not be privy to if I just leave you in a situation where you're comfortable. Right. Let me ask you this, though, because I'm very intrigued by 
Because you, most times, just like you said, when a young woman has a baby, yeah. right, then that baby usually grows up and has a baby at a young age, right. and it's, it's cyclical, right? Right. What do you think, you, you, you know, she may have told you, or right. <clears throat> just your thoughts, what do you think uh, made her say, I'm gonna do the opposite? Was it, you know, things that her mom told her, or this was just something that she kind of said, had the sense in her head to say, wait a minute, what they're telling me to do is not right. Right. This doesn't make sense for my life and my son. It was my mom, I'm gonna be quite honest with you. My, my grandmother was born and bred in Chattanooga. Right. I think she's one, she was one of 17 or one of four, or 24, right. a large, huge family. And I think she has a fourth grade education. Right. So, you know, she worked in Blue Cross and Blue Shield, right. janitorial, and she retired from um, the Hilton Garden, the Hilton, um, as, as the lead, um, what do you call it, housekeeper. Right. So for my mom, she said, listen, I may not get it now, but I can get it later. So she right. made, she focused on my education, but she also went back and got her undergraduate degree in health services. Right. And she really made sure that she, you know, she educated herself. Right. Uh, when she passed, um, she was in administration at Cincinnati State University. Yep. And um, it's a classic example of what you can do if you plan the work and work the plan. Right. And right. I think she had a plan for me because I'm the first male in my family. Right. And, and when I say this, I say say this from a space of humility, right. not not a space of, of, of arrogance. Right. I'm the first male in my family to graduate high school, junior college, get an undergraduate right. degree, and acquire a master's. Right. right. So in my family, I never really thought about it, but that was a major achievement because right. We were just taught kind of get a, maybe get a factory job. Right. If you can get you 20 or 30 years and put a little something away in your 401k before they were calling it 401k, it was right. retirement. Yeah. Um, hey man, you living a great life. Right, right. My mom wanted to stretch me and said, this is not the space and place where I want you to be. But yeah, man, that is, that is you know, a really great story. And, you know, just from reading the book, I know that your mom loved you. Yeah. And you, you know, and, and, and you loved her and she made great sacrifices um, for you and really smart choices yes. to be so, to be so young. Yeah. And not only that, to stick with it. Absolutely. Right? Like, <laughs> pretty much what you and I talked about in business, you know, right. when you came up with this concept, it would have been very easy to abort the process yes. and go back to a nine to five in right. corporate because you know your skill set. Right. But right. you saw something bigger and, and, and an end game for yourself right. that most folks probably couldn't understand. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people, why would you why would you leave? Right. Why would you do that? You right. know, like yeah. why how are you gonna make money? Like yeah. do you think people's gonna buy it from you? Did all all of these questions, you know, from people who were very comfortable in their like their situation. You said, right. Work at a company for 30 years, you know, get your pension, get your, you know, your 401k, and then, you know, that's kind of, get your social security, and right. then that's it. That's, that's it. That's your life. Yeah. Um, you know, so definitely, it's, I, I was just like, I have to. Right. I have to. I have to at least see. Right? But not just see, uh, as my friend always says, let it cycle, right? Right. Don't quit after you know one. You know you announce, okay, I'm selling stuff, right. and that first day nobody buys, and then you say this is not for me, right? Right. right. Like, and then you just put it down. No, right. you gotta just keep, 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 keep going. That's yeah, right. keep going. So let's talk about the book. Right. You know, I love the book because one, it is you know a short read. Which is which is key now because it's very key. Listen, attention people's span. <laughs> attention spans are so short now, right, right. and and not only that, people don't even want to read. No, absolutely. it is. I think it's terrible. I think that it's terrible that people, and even on social media, like you can barely get people to read your caption. Wow. And you can say in there, hey, whoever comments on this, I'll give you a million dollars, and you still won't get any comments. Right, right. And if you do, it won't even be about that. Right. It'll be saying, you got on a nice jacket. Right. right? Where can I get that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who does your beard? Right. Exactly. Like, it's funny, I read some of your captions. Man, you have great skin. Who takes care of your skin? Right, right. But has, you could be posting about something totally different. Yes. So, yeah, it so has yeah. nothing to do with what I'm posting about. But Absolutely. you're right. So let's talk about the book. Um, <clears throat> what made you say, let me put this knowledge into a book? Right. So um, first, first off, uh, with with that, 
I'm also um, a corporate exec right. in staffing. Most people don't know that. Right. And uh, I'm over 11 locations in Atlanta. Right. And it allows me to see a lot of us uh, African Americans taking on roles and, and temporary agencies. Right. Right. And, and in fact, my next book is going to be called The Tip. Right. But with this book, what made me do it is I started noticing on days of, of young men and young women um, of African American descent coming in to be interviewed. Right. They would come in and they would not have on at least a pair of khakis, a button down shirt, a pair of dress shoes. Right. And at least have some form of a resume. Right. Okay. So I started taking a poll and I think of 400, I right. think only two of them came in that right. were prepared. Right. So the num numbers were so staggering. Right. I said to myself, I need to take the next step. And in right. taking the next step, I had to come from a space where I did not judge individuals for what they did not know. Right. But I was willing to give them some of the things that they needed to know that could help elevate them to the next level. Right. Hence, I came up with not dress for success. Yep. With all due respect, I think that that's it's kind of stayed its time. Yes. It's, it's yep. played its course. Yep. Stayed its course. I don't want to say it's corny, but to some it is. Right. Yep. So no, for me, I yep. said, "What about PYA?" And my wife said, "What's that?" And I said, "Polish your appearance." Yep. She said, "Where are you going with it?" I said, "I want to, in order to write a book, yep. you, I think you need to tell your foundation and where you come from." Yep. You know, to, in order to get a, a reader in today's time. There has to be something that gravitate connection. Connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm gonna tell about my humble beginnings. Yep. Um, but I'm also gonna tell how I've never forgot those those right. humble beginnings because I think that's key. That's oh, paramount. Sure. That's paramount. For sure. I said, and then from there, I'm gonna go to betting on yourself. Yep. What you and I are doing on a daily basis. Right. Right. Um, we're betting on ourselves. Yep. So from there, I said, you know, let's create um, a lifestyle. Yep. Um, how you see yourself, and in betting on yourself. Let's teach them the difference between priority-based investing and consumer-based investing. Yes. Which yes, most folks, yes. they, they have no clue mm -hmm. as to what that means. Right. And if you notice in the book, anytime I throw out a term, I try to give the definition. Yep. That way, because, you know, when you think about the infantry of the New York Times, at one point in time, it was alleged that it was written on a fifth grade level. Right. And the reason that was genius is because it didn't challenge the reader to have to decipher vocabulary and break down things that would make them uncomfortable. Yes. And, yes. When, and when you speak to an easy read, an easy read leads the reader. Yes. It doesn't confuse the reader. Yes. So my goal was to continue to lead you from chapter to chapter. Yep. So chapter four, I went into a polished mentor. Yep. I'm a firm believer that two things that we miss out on in the African American community, yep. are mentors, yep. and and uh, getting a psychother a therapist. Yes. See, we think therapy means we're crazy. Yes. Yep. Therapy just means that you need to stop internalizing and have someone that you feel you're in a safe space to have that conversation. Right. Right. Yep. So for me, then I went to chapter four, a polished mentor. Yep. I'm a firm believer if you come from a single parent home and your parent your parent is not in the place, or guardian is not in the place or space to get you where you need to be. Yep. They need to reach out and grab that village that can help get you there. Right. Because if they don't grab yep. that village, what they've done is they've stunted your growth twice. They don't have right. the ability, and now they're not willing to reach out to an individual who can help you. Right. All right? Yeah. So then from there, I said, I, I wanted this book to be about the inner and the outer. Yep. So the last two chapters for me, you know, we always talk about grooming, right? Yep. But for a guy like yourself and I, we think that's making sure our, our suits are tailored. Some people may right. think, oh man, they got on tailored suits. Right. Their beards look nice. Right. But away from, get, it, it's more than just getting a haircut. Yeah. Trimming your ear hairs, trimming yes. your nose hairs, yeah. making sure your, your smile looks on point. Right. Um, you, you know, your nails. Right. Getting your cuticles, oiling your cuticles, right. different things of that nature. So. I go into what I consider to be polished grooming. Right. You know, you were talking about uh, the importance of washing your face and treating your skin. Right, right. So I went into that. Then in chapter six, I basically talk, speak to arrogance and confidence. Right, and let's talk about that. So I like that. <laughs> um, 
you I'm know. glad you like it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. No, you were speak you were speaking to me like it, you know, and you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, it's written in a way that pretty much anybody can pick it up and read it right. and not have to, you know, now people don't go open the dictionary, they, they just, just go on their phone, right? <laughs> but you know, anybody can doesn't have to stop to say, okay, well, I don't even know what this word means. They can follow Let along. Me, right, exactly. Um, but you know, I thought that, that that part of the book was a good one to talk about. So let's talk yeah. about that. So when when you stepped out and, and you said, I'm gonna start the platform of the wealthy guy. Right. Right? You had some folks that would probably in one-off conversation say, but Robert, your life looks great now. Right. And you said, yeah, but there's more for me. Right. So one, one of my favorite speakers, before I get to that chapter, is, is, is Inky Johnson. Yep. And, uh, and Inky, I, you know, I was with Inky last week, and Inky says that <laughs> your perspective yep. basically drives your process. Yes. Okay. Yep. So I said, man, your perspective drives your process. Your perspective drives your productivity. And yep. I said, it's all about the mindset. Right. So, so for me, when I wrote that chapter, there are times where I'm going with this, where you have to be extremely confident when no one else believes in your yes. process, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. When, when everybody sees you do that post, and they see you smiling, my yep. people, my people, right? right? Yep. But they don't know. There may have been a time just 30 minutes prior, you may have been crying, you may yep. have been sad, like, man, okay, but I gotta pull it together because right. I have people, I have a following depending on me now. Right. They right. expect what? The end product. Exactly. So I always say your confidence will keep you in the game. Yep. Okay. Your arrogance will make you believe that you can do things that no one else thinks you can. Right. So right. sometimes you have to have a great balance of both. Right. You have to understand the difference. Yep. Just because we're confident in the way confident in the way we present ourselves, yep. doesn't mean we're arrogant. Right. But we know there's a certain, as they like to say, swag, panache, that and a certain presentation that we need to 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 convey. Yep. In certain rooms, but more importantly, for our following to see that if you want to do this, here's some one-offs that you need right. in order to yep. be successful and to keep the cycle going. Yes. The cycle yes. of excellence, right. not the cycle of repetitive, you know what, I tried, it didn't work, I tried for two months, nobody right. responded, let me go find a job. Right. Right, absolutely. And, you know... I it, it to me it just was such a great point right because you definitely have you know we hear all the time don't be arrogant don't right. be this don't be but there has to be a certain level of you think you are the man that's right and and you like believe it and that helps you to be able to put yourself out on Front Street, right, over and over again, Absolutely. right, because that is that's a hard thing to do to put yourself on Front Street in the public's eye to be judged. Absolutely, in the way that social media is now, with you know people with private pages and this and that and the other, and they just come and say whatever they want to say, right. and they they, come they will you. try to crush you. Yeah, they come for They you. will try to crush you. So you have to have that kind of sense of like. Sense of self. Sense of self. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that that was absolutely like a great point, um, you know, in, in the book. So let's talk a little bit about the 30-day devotional. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Um, the How is that different from. The reason the 30-day devotional is different is. Yep. Think about this. We, we just kind of talked about our plight. And we talked about how hectic it can be, right? Right. So I, I'm a firm believer that. Um, Meditation, yep, um, and diet will yep. solve a lot of our ailments. Yep, um, and that's a whole nother topic. Right, but, you know, I'm, I'm vegetarian. Right, so and, and I'm a firm believer that um, before we pick up the phone, yep, be, be, before we get on social media, yep, we need to give that time to ourselves. Yep, you know, now from a religious standpoint, some may pray, some may not pray. To, to each his own. Right, but you have to have time of meditation. Yes. And and that time of meditation and yep. being able to reflect. So, you know, let, let, let's say, for instance, and of course, you know, our, our slogan is we will grow with you. Right. You know, that's our motto. 
but just kind of taking you through like the very first day, like yep. let's say a day of labor, right? So what I do is, you know, work harder tomorrow than you did today. Yep. That's just the quote. Yep. What does that really mean? I'm a firm believer in don't make someone have to go fish when you're trying to decipher information. You right. show them how to fish. Right. And the way you show them how to fish is you break down what you mean. Yep. So then I break down what that actually means in a paraphrase. Yep. Then we give them a scripture. Yep. To live by. Yep. Let's say, for instance, you had this devotional. Today, you may not have something that resonates on a day of labor. Right. But three days later, something comes across your desk right. and you go, that's what Alex, that's what Alexander was talking about. Right. Well, guess what? Now I give you five to seven pages where you can dictate notes. Right. Now, and each day has a guide. Yep. So it's just not like, no, not to any devotional. My thing is a devotional has to have a purpose. Right. And the purpose should give you what each day is and you're working towards an end game. Right. So with the 30 day devotional, that's what we did. Yep. And we put volume one on both the books because that gives us the opportunity to come with volume two. Right. And in the main book, I did six chapters yep. because seven is the number of completion. Yep. In my opinion, we're all incomplete. Right. We're all striving to get to our best self. Yep. Um, so, you know, what I like about books like the 30 day devotional is that aspect of taking notes. Right. Right. Like, I put a lot, I think of things, you know, and I try to make sure that I put it in my phone now. Right. And I, and you see, we sitting right here, I got my pen, you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, absolutely. I write things, that people like, you yeah. write things down? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, I absolutely write down the things that I need to do, ideas that come to my head. Right. Because these are things, like, there's just something about putting your thoughts down on paper right. that is a very different effect than just thinking it. Absolutely. And part of the reason why they say 90% of businesses fail yep. is because, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, only 1% exceed, succeed, it's because 90% are not committed to paper. Right. There's no real plan. There's no, let's, we're not even talking about a business plan. Right. There's no plan. Right. You know, so I was taught at a young age by a guy by the name of George W. Williams. Brother taught me, he said, you got to plan to work and work the plan. Right. And, 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 and look at it this way. Um, you know, if you're a runner, right? Look at the difference between running on a treadmill yep. and, and running out in a neighborhood. Right. When you're on a treadmill, it's the same routine over and over. Yep. The only thing that you can change is the type of program that the system you use. Right. Do I want hills? Do I want random? Right. You change right, that. Right, right. But when you go out and run in that scenery, it's real time, right? Yep. The hill adjusts. You can't press a button. Right. It truly adjusts. So I have a saying that a lot of us are treadmill. Yep. And the reason we're treadmilling is because we're really afraid to venture out and see what's out in the community. Right. To see what's out uh, um, right. in a different atmosphere. Yep. So it doesn't allow us to grow because we're so used to seeing the same thing over and over. And that's insanity. Right. We're doing the same thing over and over and expecting what? A different, different result. result. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So for me, you know, when I, when I put the devotional together and when I put the book together... I wanted individuals not only to see something different, right. but I wanted to show my vulnerable side by yes. telling hints where I came from, right. but also show, hey, if you keep working the cycle, right. your process will change and your outcome will change. Right. You right. know, so um, you know, what, one of the things that, that I like to say is don't allow your emotions yep. to overshadow your intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if that ain't a word, I don't know what it is. And that is something that I still struggle with to, you know, like right. today, like I will see something or someone will say something to me and I have to remember, right. like, this is not about feelings. No, right, right, right. No, it's like, not. Don't let your feelings kind of overtake you because right. then that's when. It, it just kind of it goes wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, because what you have to keep in mind too is you're now a pillar of a community. Right. And when I say a community, not just in a part of New York. Right. You're a pillar in the fashion community. Right. You're a pillar on Instagram. There are people that can't wait for your next post. Right. So right. if if you allow what someone says yep. to to get in the way of your end game, you're never going to arrive 
at where you're where you're supposed to be. Right. What's for you? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Because um, what what I had to figure out is my platform is no longer about me. Right. My platform is about uh, followers. It's about individuals that I inspire. Yep. It's about encouraging the heart. It's no longer just about Alexander Pizzo. Right. Right. Yeah. No. It's it's, it's so true. And because you have. You know what I've learned while you know doing doing this whole Instagram thing is you never know who's who's watching. That's right. Where? That's right. It, it and because it is you know Instagram, it, it, it people can access it all over the world. Anywhere. Anywhere. At any time. Anywhere at any time. That's right. And what you've said or done or whatever is there. It's there. It's there right. for whoever to go and see. Whether you delete it or not, it's still in the cloud. It's still there. You know, so as Herm Edwards, the, the, the now Arizona State football coach who used to be the New York uh, Jets coach, would say, don't press sin. Right. And what he meant by that is before you get emotional and, and you type something out, because it's easy to get Twitter fingers. Yes. You know, it, it, it's yeah. easy to be Instagram tough. Right. Before you get into that space, yep. let it sit. Yep. And then come back and go, is that something I would want someone to send to me? Right. You know what? It doesn't make sense. Delete. Right. Right. Yeah, no, that, that is so true. Like, stop, you know, because people do get angry, start typing away. Right. Right. And then send it, you know, and if they go back and read it, I'm sure they're not going to feel the same, the same way, way they felt when they were writing it. Yeah. So they, it totally makes sense to just stop, leave it, come back to it. And you know, you you nine times out of ten, you're not gonna feel that way, or right. you ain't gonna have that same anger that you had when same you were, energy, right? yeah, yeah, when you were typing it. I wanna let's you know, you a fashion guy, I'm a fashion guy. Absolutely. So let's let's talk a little bit about fashion and sure. more more importantly, style, right? Fashion is. Uh, it, it comes and goes. It, exactly right. right, but but style that's something totally different. So talk to us a little bit about what would you say your personal style is? Uh, you know, my my personal style honestly is, is just one of a kind, handcrafted. Yep. You know, I I never try to emulate anyone that I see. Right. Because I, I'm a firm believer that that your style should be timeless. Yes. Fashion is a trend. Right. I try to avoid trends. Right. Um, I know real, real big, the, you know, the side one button. I love the side one button. Um, in addition to that, I, I know the double breasted is huge right now. Right. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I like the, like, I have a double breasted this corduroy. Right. You know. Oh, um, that sounds nice right yes. there. Listen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but, but it's all, it has to, it has to fit you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your beard, it fits you. Right. You know, the right. way I wear my beard, it fits, fits me. Yeah, exactly. It, it has to fit. So so when I think of style and fashion, I just think of one of a kind handcrafted pieces that, that complement who you are. Right. You know? Right. So um, I'm, I'm going to go back to the book, too, because it just made me think of something. Yeah. So in the book, you talk about kind of like how you started shopping and how you started thinking about your your style right right and right. how you said you okay let me see if i could like paraphrase it so you said that you would kind of go to those high-end stores right to look to see what was in trend what was you know in fashion right but then you go away right and you would go and you know get your clothes somewhere else Very good. and make it your 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 personal style and Absolutely. i thought that and that and and that spoke to me did it really because <laughs> because that's what i did too but man that's unbelievable you know yeah. that's what i didn't have you know money to go yeah. to barney's and all of those things right. as it as, as but a nothing would person. stop you from looking in the window right nothing would stop me from looking in the window um, and, and you said it was a difference between a wish shopper and, and what's the other, the other type of Between shopper? a wish shopper and a window shopper. And a window shopper. Right. Right. And it's like, you go in, you look to see what's in style, right? right? In, in, on trend. And right. then you go away to the store that you can afford. Right. Right. And then you mimic was it exactly yeah right. and i thought that that was such a a gem especially for for the younger people Somebody right because inspired to do yes yeah. absolutely because they think that okay well i have to have a gucci belt and no. i have to have 
Gucci sh- and I have to have because these are the things that are in right. trend. You know, I had a um, I had a client, uh, a friend of mine. She bought her son for you know to get his suit for the prom. Right. And I said, okay, well, what kind of shoes are you gonna wear? So he pulls up the shoes, fifteen hundred dollar right. Louboutin. I said, no way. Right. I said, there's so many sh- like shoes that you can get that. You One could. look better than that, and right. two that are much less expensive that will look just as great with right. your suit. And but you preaching right now, right? And, and it's, it's a, you, you, you own your soapbox right. right now, and it, it, it's a couple things that that I can touch on right there if, right. You, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Touch yep. on. So when I wrote chapter two, better yourself. Yep. I actually go out and speak to young professionals. I speak to college kids. Um, you know, I. I do consulting work on that end. Right. And I'll walk in and I'll say, you know, I introduce myself and I'll kind of tell them a little bit about me. And I said, look, man, as I look around the room, you guys, you guys look great. Right. And I said, well, let me just ask a couple questions before we get started. I said, because everybody in here said that they're betting on themselves, right? Right. With a show of hands, who's betting on themselves? Right. Everybody raised their hands. I said, okay, with a show of hands, guys, who in here owns a pair of Jordans? Right. All the hands go up. Yeah. I said, ladies, with a show of hands, who in here has a high end bag? You know, whatever you deem high end, whether it be Louis Vuitton, Birkin bag, uh, you say Laurent, whatever. Right. Red hands, right? I said, boy, I tell you what, y'all on fire right now. Right. Let me ask you this. Who in here owns an iPhone or a high end Android? Right. Every hand goes up. Right. Hmm. All right. Well, who in here, and ladies, this goes for you all as well, has a, uh, at least two suits, one for a beginning, middle, and then a, just a set for a closing interview? Right less than 50% of the hands go up. Right. I said, wait a minute. You all say you're betting on yourself. Right. I said, but the only thing I'm seeing is a higher percentage of consumer-based investing right. versus right. priority-based right. investing. Right. How can you truly be betting on yourself yep. if all you're doing is feeding into someone else's dream that's never going to benefit you? Right. I said, so that's first. Then you talk about the $1,500, $1,500 Christian Louboutin, right? So here, here's where I'm at with that. I've never owned a pair of Jordans. Right. I've never owned a starter jacket. Yeah. My mom says, son, if you want those guest jeans with the leather, you have to get a three-letter word, a job. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I pay for tuition. That's priority-based investing. Right. right. Pay now so you don't have to pay later. Right. She right. said, you're at an age, if you want some of those things, I know you play basketball because that's right. your goal to go to college for that. Right. But you also have to learn the value of what I'm spending my money on. Is 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 it a need or a want or right. is it frivolous? Right. When you go back to with shopping yep. versus window shopping. Yep. The window shopper is the individual. You remember when we were kids we used to play that's my car? We see a car yeah. driving down the street. We go, oh no, that's mine. Right. No, I called it first. <laughs> right. Window shopping is my version of that's my car. Right. You go look in the window, you go, oh man, look at that. Look at them. That Robert Grant shirt. Right, right. Wow. Right. Look, that's, oh, that's hot. Right. Man, I love to have one of those. Right. With shopping is, I'm going to see that Robert Graham shirt, right? Yep. Then I'm going to go find all the high end drift, thrift stores. Yep. And I'm going to look for one. Yep. And if I find one, fine. If not, I'm looking for something that's relatively close. Right. That fits my style. Right. Okay. Right. So there's a difference. You know, a lot of us say we want to be window shoppers. Yeah. Window shopping does not lend to you creating your style. Right. Window shopping, it really what it does, it changes your mentality. Right. It keeps you in a space of you feel like you're never worthy of having certain things. Yes. But if you learn to wish shop, yes. wish shop will put you in a space that I've looked at it. I know it's out of my price my, my price range right, right now, but let's look thrift. If yep. we can't thrift, let's refashion. If yep. we can't refashion, let's go to the to, to a goodwill that we know is in a high end neighborhood right. where they'll they'll take, you know, they'll they'll bring back uh high end ties, right. Robert Talbot ties. Right. That I can't get this Robert Talbot tie. Yep. This Robert Talbot tie is two hundred and fifty bucks. Right. But you know what? If, if I go to a high-end thrift store, yep. somebody took 10 Robert Talbot ties they've been wearing for the last five years that right. they've only worn each one of them four or five times, right. and they give them to the Goodwill. Right. Right. Yeah. No, some of the, the things that I've gotten the most compliments on have been from the Goodwill. Absolutely. $3 Brooks Brothers tie. Man. That is a great tie. 
Three dollars. You preach. From the, you, you, you preach. know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And my mom was a master tailor. Right. And a thrifter. Mm -hmm. I got my first down coat, which was cashmere, cashmere wool, right. which I had no clue what cashmere wool, back when we called them London Falls. We right. called everything that was a down coat a London, right. London Falls. Because right. that was a name brand. We didn't right. know that was a name brand, not a stock. Right. And right. I got my first down coat going through a thrift store. Right. Yeah. No, that you definitely, I've been a, a thrifter for a long time. Right. And I understand that. You know, there are people who are much or more fortunate that do go and give stuff away, and you can go in there and you can get it yep. for pennies on the dollar. Absolutely. You know, we get so so caught up on how much we spend, right, versus how much we save. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, man. But no, that's that. That to me was was. I know we were supposed to get on get on fat uh, style, but uh, yeah. it, it's that's a part of it. That's, that's part all of part of. It. Yeah, that's all part of. It. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So what is you know what are some of the things that are next for you? So we're actually building a platform um, that's going to roll out September third. Yep. Uh, it's it's called. Polish, it's polishyourappearance.com, but yep. it's, it's going to be Polish Your Appearance University. Ah, And nice. what Polish Your Appearance University is geared towards is we'll have a consulting component where we actually go to companies, yep. and as opposed to sending it through a staffing agency, yep. we'll actually get young men um, and, and guys older trained um, and help them get certifications yep. in certain fields. Right. And then what we'll do is we'll act as the, the, the liaison yep. uh, for those companies to get those positions filled based on that database of, of young men and right. we'll go on to the women's side eventually as well right. that we we've built but more importantly yep. we we speak to the core and yep. what we consider the core to be is what we call an acronym it's it's home yeah it's your health yeah your uh, um being optimi optimistic yep your morals yep and your overall involvement right so so we're going to speak to those things and then what will happen is they'll be able to purchase a monthly membership yep. and, and, and every quarter we'll have a retreat. Yep. And each retreat, let's say for instance, um, at the end of the year, we were to bring you in to speak yep. on fashion, to speak on branding, yep. to, to, to speak on building a platform. Yep. They will actually get a legitimate skill set right. on how to do right. that. Yep. And it's almost like continuing education right. for growth yep. as opposed to we we think the model is graduate high school, send a kid to college. Yep. Not all of us are built for college. I just I had this conversation maybe two, three podcasts ago. Right. Yep. So here's what happens. You send a kid to college, and one thing I I've learned is the two people that are never gonna love you back are Freddie Mac and Fanny. <laughs> Freddie Mac and Fanny, Fanny Mac. Right. They're never right. going to love you back. Right, right. Now, right. they're going to ask where their money's at. Right. They're never going to love you back. Right. And we're not prepared because, like I said, the five P's, perfect practice prevents poor performance. Yep. We normally get 60 grand, 100 grand in debt before we realize, man, I really don't want to be a doctor. Right. So you, you've been in school six years and now you realize you don't want to be a doctor. Right. Well, what do you want to do? Right. Well, you know, I decided I want to be a DJ. Right. But those, uh, like you said, Fannie Mae, she ain't, ain't going away. They ain't going away. Sally Mae and Freddie Mac, yeah, yeah. Freddie Mac, they are not, they are going, not away. going away. Yeah. So, so go so be a DJ, but just we know still want our money. <laughs> right. First and fifteenth. Right. We need that payment. Right. It's right. mandatory. Right. And you can only put in deferment for so long. Right. And forbearance. Right. After so long, it's all compounded interest, and now that five thousand dollar loan you took out is twenty. Right. Before you know it. Right. So polish your appearance. University is what's next for us yep. because we really feel like it's a need, and there's no such thing as a niche market. Right. When when you have something like that. Our goal is to encourage the heart and impact the lives of many. Right. So that's what's next. And we have a four-part documentary called The Trek, yep. uh, which we're rolling out next year uh, for some film festivals. So yep. we're looking for that as well. Okay. So listen, Alexander Pizzo, I am so glad to have, you know, one, got to meet you face-to-face. -face. Yeah. You know, I you are a testament of... Um, you know, because you, you first reached out to me, right? The one thing that I know about people who go after what they want is right. they're not shy no. to ask for what they want. I'm not afraid to hear no. Right. Because yeah. if you remember, yep. I, if I can say for the podcast, yep. 
our very first conversation was more or less, hey, I'm not saying no, but I'm saying no because we do the same thing, similar things. Right. right. And, here, and if I could speak to that yep. real quick. A guy called me like a couple of weeks ago and he said, listen, man, I, I want to put on an event. Yeah. And I said, well, let's let's do, I said, our goal for Alexander Pizzo is to do three events a, a year. I said, all of them are going to have a, a, a fundraising component. Right. And he said, yeah, but I don't want to do a bowling tournament. And I said, why not? And he said, because such and such does a bowling tournament right. in September. I said, do me a favor. Right. I said, the next time you go grocery shopping, yep. walk down the bread aisle. Right. He said, why the bread aisle? I said, because you're going to see about 30 different types of brands uh, of bread, wheat, uh, potato bread, white bread. Right. I said, and they're all going to be relatively. Definitely. So many people reach out to me all the time. Right. At, you know, like asking all types of questions. But, you know, like I said, when, when I was first communicating with you, I was like, you know, there's an opportunity for that I'm, I'm coming down, you know, come, there's an opportunity for you to be on the podcast. Right. And we got on the phone. Right. Right. And we talked and the vibes were there. Absolutely. And boom. Here we, we are. We, we in the building. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we in the building. So, you know, I, I just want to thank you for a couple of reasons. One, for sending me the book. Absolutely. Right. Um, two, for, you know, driving an hour and a half to get here. To no me. worries, man. I, I, I <laughs> believe in keeping my word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me too. And that's yeah. why I said I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm going to have them on. I'm right. going to have them on. And I appreciate yeah. that opportunity. And, um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, likewise. You know, it is, th this is great. Um, everything that you're doing is, is great. And, and, and what is great about it is it's from the heart. Right. right. And it is a genuine wanting to help others. Right. You can't go wrong with that. Absolutely. You cannot go wrong with that. Never. Never. Right. Never. So tell everybody where they could find you. Okay. So uh, for those of you out there, you can find me on, on Instagram, Alexander, P-E-Z-O underscore. Yeah. On Twitter, Alexander, P-E-Z-O underscore. On Facebook, Alexander Pizzo. We're on LinkedIn, Alexander Pizzo. Yep. Um, and then, of, of course, you can look at our platforms, alexanderpizzo.com, and you can find us at polishyourappearance.com. Again, we're dropping polishyourappearance.com, the Polish Your Appearance University, on September 3rd. So we're really looking forward to you all coming out there, become a member, let us be a consultant for you. But we got a lot of great things coming as well as the documentary, which is gonna drop. We're gonna push it back and drop it next year. Yeah. So make sure we get everything refined and tight. Yes. So thank you again, Alexander Pizzo. So my people, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the My People Podcast. If you're listening in and you want to see what Alexander Pizzo looks like, make sure that you check out the My People podcast on my YouTube channel. Um, and make sure that you show us some love and subscribe to our show. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so on Instagram at the underscore my people underscore podcast or by email at the my people podcast at gmail. Dot com And again, 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 if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on your listening platform. It's The Wealthy Guy here with Alexander Pizzo, and I'll see you soon.